Welcome to H360 Health Talk. We're here today with Dr. Andreas Michaelitis, one of the authors of a recent study published in the Journal of Metabolic Syndrome and Related Disorders titled Effectiveness of a Smartphone Application for the Management of Metabolic Syndrome, Components Focusing on Weight Loss, a Preliminary Study. Uh, he is a clinical psychologist who specializes in helping people overcome depression, anxiety, and cope with different tra difficult transitions in life, such as weight loss. Uh, doctor, it's good to see you today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're very, very interested in talking to you about your recent study because smartphones have taken over the world, right? You can't turn on a commercial these days without seeing a, a commercial on the new iPhone or the new Samsung. And really, we've put the power in the palm of the hand, whether it's a patient or a clinician. Um, but can you start by just telling us a little bit about your interest in psychology and how you got started? Sure, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, again, I'm a clinical psychologist, um, and my passion is really merging information technology with psychology. So really kind of translating some of the things that we know about psychology into a uh, digital, in the, di the digital world, if you will. Um, and uh, be that at may, as it may, um, you know, this study uh, accomplished just that. Um, we did uh, an intervention uh, for uh, employees. Um, it was a weight loss intervention uh, that they got uh, free of charge. Um, and the exciting thing about that was that not only did, uh, did, not only did they lose weight um, at 15 weeks, but they sustained that weight loss in one year, uh, which is something incredibly difficult to, to achieve. Yeah, I, I would say you're right, because we hear all about these, what they term as yo-yo diets, right? So, and, and now we're coming up on December's and the holidays. So we're going to eat and we're going to drink. And then in January, you know what happens, our New Year's resolution, right? We're going to lose weight. And that lasts till about, what, January 15th or so. If that. Right? We, we give it the old college try. Right, right. So very interesting. And uh, as we get into this, I'm, I'm really fascinated to talk about, you know, where is the border of, in, in terms of technology and health, where does it become intrusive? And so I'm sure we'll get into that as we talk sure. about the study. So why do you think there are some um, inconsistencies, you may say, with like weight loss apps and the actual act of losing weight? Are people just disengaging from the messages? Yeah, I think, the, I think one misconception is that um, all of the weight loss apps that are out there are, are the same. Um, you know, anybody could develop an app and put anything they want um, on the app. You know, there's, it's really hard to see what goes on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so just having a weight loss app in and of itself is, I would say, not enough to say that the app helps you lose weight. Um, you know, we've seen in the other studies where it's published where uh, just giving people information, um, you know, just spewing out their information about like activity that they, they you know, exercise, for example, is not enough to, to lose weight. So just giving somebody the ability to log a meal and spitting out information is often not enough. Um, yeah. So yeah. But I have an Apple Watch, and it often reminds me to close my rings, and it'll be like, "Keep going today," and I'm like, right. "Shut up!" Stop <laughs> you know. So I can see why those reminders just wouldn't be quite enough to get someone there. Exactly, and and they work for some people, um, but the the amount of people that they that those kind of things actually work for, I would say, is extremely extremely uh, small. Mm. So, so you talk about what doesn't work is just logging a meal and then kind of looking at information. When you set out to design your study, what were some of the elements around that design that you really baked into the, how you were going to conduct the study to you know, have meaningful outcomes for that study, whether they be positive or negative? But you know, what, what was the jumping off point there and how you really designed the study to begin with? Sure, and I do want to clarify one thing. So logging meals in combination with a lot of other factors can be very meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so what we set out to do was create that kind of environment where um, participants are doing a lot of these different things um, uh, that would help them get to that, to that goal. So logging meals, for example, was, was one thing. Um, number two, logging exercises. Um, another, another really big component was um, coaching. Um, so kind of that personalized, you know, meeting the person where they are approach, which I think is something that 
is missing from a lot of the apps. Um, so that's another thing. Um, in addition to that, uh, it, was a, it was a study where uh, we almost created like a culture amongst the people who were involved that um, it was almost fun to, to do this. So we kind of changed their environment. Uh, we, we helped remove their barriers by, uh, by the coaching. And we also tried to educate them with the content. Uh, so uh, it was really a matter of um, making them the experts of the process and helping them make meaningful changes within themselves and around themselves. Uh, for the success. Yeah. So, so you used the word making it fun. Did you add some sort of gamification element into the design? Uh, so the, we did things outside of the app um, that um, I wouldn't call it gamification, but we had weekly goals, okay? Um, so you can call those gamification if you like. Um, I think it, it's hard when you use the word gamification with weight loss. It's kind of a, it's a difficult thing to gamify, I would say, over the long haul. But within this, uh, what we did for the study was we helped set, uh, we helped the users set goals on a weekly basis that were attainable if they worked hard. Um, and essentially, um, in order to uh, achieve those goals, you have to develop different skills. And that's really what the app is about, is a uh, skill building app uh, that helps you develop the skills to make lifelong changes um, you know, that you're gonna need down the road. Can you take us through yeah. the app a little more? I mean, what's it called? Is it currently available to people outside of the study? You mentioned that it has some coaching and uh, meal logging. So how does someone log in and use the app fully? Sure, um, so the app is available on uh, the Android uh, store and also um, the Play Store, uh, iOS and, and Android. Uh, it is, uh, you could purchase it from Noom.com, um, and it's available to consumers. Uh, it works by delivering a, what we call a structured program. Um, so for six, the first 16 weeks is really just giving users the fundamental information that's needed to kind of really create that, um, that foundation for, you know, this lifelong change that they're going to make. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so the first 16 weeks uh, is really that foundational information. Um, in addition to that, you will um, work with a coach, a one-on-one -on -one coach, who will help you set those weekly goals uh, that are really based on, on your needs. Um, so like you said before, you had that, you know, that, that annoying thing that popped up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a coach might help you understand, is there something better? Uh, is there another better like cue or reminder that works for you? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we discard that completely. Um, and the idea is uh, that users, uh, that our users, they do log their meals, but only, only in so much that it is helpful. Um, you know, their logging is not something that uh, somebody will do for the rest of, of their lives. Um, and we really try to meet them where they are. In addition to that, um, we also have uh, groups uh, which put users uh, together uh, who are going through, this, going through this process, also led by a coach. So mm -hmm. kind of try to create that environment virtually. Is there a target audience for your app? Like, is it for people who just want to lose 10 to 15 pounds or for people who have more significant weight loss goals? It really, it, we run the gamut. Uh, so we have people who come in uh, who just, you know, 5 to 10 pounds. We have, I would say most of our, a lot of our users, maybe most of our users have really been struggling with weight loss a lot uh, in their lives. Um, and we've seen people come in who have had a lot of failures. Um, and... Uh, you know, this is just sort of the next step in their journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we can definitely understand what you're talking about because Healthy O360 is built on community. And the, the premise of Healthy O360 and the, the value to our community is that you can connect to somebody just like you going through whatever health journey you're going through, whether you're a patient who's been diagnosed with a cancer or whether you're a caregiver caring for an Alzheimer's patient you can find somebody very, very similar to you and connect. In fact, I trademarked the term virtual social therapy because you know our belief is that if, if I can find somebody and I can share my story, that's very therapeutic for me. And if I can hear somebody who is just like me and hear their story, and their story is very similar to my story, that's also, on the flip side of the coin, very therapeutic. So, you know, our whole premise is around virtual social therapy. But you said something that I, I want to hit on, that <clears throat> your, your app allows you to partner up with a coach. Um, what kinds of things would a coach tell me? Would a coach tell me, don't eat that 
candy bar, try maybe a, a small palm-sized um, serving of almonds. Or, you know, are, are, is that the kind of thing that I could expect to get from a coach? Would a coach tell me, well, don't use, you know, diet A is kind of a fad diet, probably not going to get you where you need to be. Diet B might be more of a sensible diet. Are those the kinds of things we could expect? Yeah, so I would say um, yes and no, but a little bit more no. All right, and I'll tell and I'll tell you why. Um, the the information about what's a fad diet and because we, we deal with a lot of that. You know, people there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what works, what doesn't work. We really try to bake that into our content, our curriculum. So um, that's part of our structure program. What a coach would do is help you understand what are some of your personal barriers. Um, you know, why is it that, I mean, mo we, we find that most people, or a lot of people, really do know what is the right, quote unquote, the right thing to eat that would help them find success in their weight loss versus what are, what are some of the things that are, um, you know, kind of uh, help, causing them to stumble along the way. <clears throat> so um, a coach would help you, I guess, understand some of your previous successes, uh, previous barriers, and help you really capitalize on things that you do well already uh, and uh, you know, th problems that you've run into in the past and help you kind of get a, a, around that. So you know, just simply telling somebody, don't eat that, you better eat this, um, I don't think is a very personally effective way to help somebody change their behaviors. Um, helping the, you, the person understand you know, what is it about that one thing that they might think they need to eat that they can't do for some reason. And maybe there's a plan B, maybe there's something around that. Um, maybe it's at the end of the day, eating the thing you want to eat, but in a moderate portion that might make the difference for you. Um, you know, so there are a lot of, a lot of, I would say, psychological factors that we really um, uh, help, the, uh, help our, our users. Um, overcome um, increasing frustration tolerance. You know, changing your behaviors and uh, sometimes sometimes make people uh, makes people feel deprived, um, and so that requires somebody to undergo a bit of frustration. Um, and sometimes that frustration is okay. And just kind of addressing those kind of issues um, is something that you can expect uh, from a coach. So it kind of sounds like the first step of the journey begins with a baseline understanding of where that person's at. Of what their goals are, what some of the obstacles that they've had in the past uh, are. And then, so what about um, a, a person who gets the app and does the baseline and they're going along just fine, and then all of a sudden they, quote, fall off the wagon, right? The, the wheels just fall off the bus and they feel like they're back to square one. <clears throat> does your app and your coaching account for kind of those major setbacks in the journey? Absolutely. Uh, and we think about those setbacks as part of the journey. So not so much that they're the deviation from the journey, but they're, it's kind of what you're gonna see along the way. Um, we do a variety of things to help create safeguards for, for our users. For one, for example, uh, we have created SOS plans. Uh, so when users come in and they're super motivated, super excited um, to do this, you know, we kind of have the conversation of, all right, well, uh, let's say you were to start to kind of get away from us a little bit what can we do, what can your coach do, um, you know, to bring you back um, and potentially, you know, kind of see what's going on uh, and correct some of those things, if you will. And so uh, what we've done in the past is um, send uh, text messages, um, send a, a different kind of alert, ask the group to, um, you know, to do something specific for that person. Uh, we've had users recruit family members or friends uh, who can help them um, if they're kind of falling off. So it's really meet the user where they are and not one SOS plan will work for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So in the U.S., you know, we're dealing with something everyone was calling the obesity epidemic, which no surprise is leading to increased incidence of diabetes and heart disease um, in certain parts of the U.S. and also kind of around the world. So what are your, what's your opinion on some of the factors that are leading into this epidemic and you know, what can we do to kind of stop it a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the, some of the factors, you know, I believe that the way we eat now and the foods that are available now were not really available 100 years ago, 50 years ago. And so, uh, so the food industry has completely changed. Um, food is also really inexpensive. Um, so, you know, I believe, um, you know, it's the combination of 
that industry changing. Uh, I don't think that uh, uh, we have caught up as a, as a society or as a culture, as a, a human being. Um, so it's a combination of those with, you know, genetic, uh, genetic factors, um, you know, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle not changing with that stuff. Um, so it's, it's really like a multi-dimensional um, multi model when, when looking at uh, why we are where we are right now. Yeah. A lot of mindless eating, you sure. know, where people will have just a bag of chips and they'll sit in front of the fridge, in front of the television, and they won't, you know, moderate how much they're eating. So I, I know a lot of people suggest putting the portion you want into a bowl and taking that with you rather than the whole bag. Sure. Yeah. So that kind of thing might work for for some people. That's really one one really good example. You know, a hundred years ago, the phenomenon of sitting in front of the TV with a bag of anything didn't exist. I mean, the TV was not. No one had a TV. I mean, TV wasn't around back then. So, you know, we're really new um, physiologically to this world that we're living in right now. Um, and, and those kind of things of, um, you know, uh, decreasing the mindless eating. And we do a lot of mindfulness within the app. Um, really, some things work for some people. Other things don't work for other people. Uh, so that's what your coach would, that was a great example. That's something that your coach would help you understand what would help you personally uh, do to decrease some of those, um, some of those things. You know, so much evolves around food, right? We go out with family, we go out with friends, we have people over to our homes and we kind of congregate in the kitchen and there's, you know, probably not the healthiest sure. things to eat and wine and all of that. What would you say to somebody who is kind of really tried to focus on weight loss, really gave it, you know, a lot of concentration, but, you know, Kind of has come to the realization that maybe they've exhausted all avenues or all opportunities. What would you say to that person about your app and your approach right. um, to to weight loss? I would say um, take a take a step back. As a step one is just sort of take a take a quick step back. Understand um, understand why you want to lose weight to begin with. Um, then from there, I would say uh, really. Um, uh, set realistic goals. Um, you know, that's another, I think, uh, another thing in our, I guess, in our society, um, you know, we glamorize things like The Biggest Loser, where, you know, you go from one day, you know, from one day to the next losing 100 pounds, which is extremely unattainable for, for most people. Um, so um, understand why you're doing the thing you're doing, uh, what's driving that motivation. Um, set a realistic goal and increase your, your mindfulness uh, towards that. So even if you're eating things that you're not, you know, quote unquote, not, should not be eating, um, I'd actually don't love saying that because, you know, everything in, I think in, in moderation can be fine. Um, but sort of drawing your, your, um, your attention to those things can help you. So if you understand some of the factors in yourself um, that are getting you to this, the same place over and over again, uh, understanding some of the environmental factors that are again reinforcing that, um, and then and then the last phase of that would, I would say is to just practice, um, just practice, practice, practice. I mean, it's a really difficult thing to do, and the more you practice, the 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 better you'll get at it. Um, you know, uh, really, it, it it's really a matter of uh, I would say for many developing new signals in the brain, new connections in the brain, um, and the only way to do that is to really just practice over and over again. Yep. Is there any rule of thumb on how long that takes? You know, you, you, you talk about, you know, we're a society of self-gratification, right? I mean, we, we want things now. We want it today. We're, we've kind of gotten used to that. And setting realistic goals, but also knowing that along, you know, in my mind, you know, dieting is, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? And so it starts with, you know, the self-assessment. Why are you wanting to lose weight? Is it for health reasons? It's, you know, cosmetic reasons. What is it? And then setting that realistic goal. How do you coach people? And when you, when you see people, you know, get the app and start down this path, are there a lot of people that are setting unrealistic goals, you know, to start out with? And then, you, you know, you kind of have to rein them back and say, look, you know, this is a more realistic goal. And by the way, you kind of have to bake in these plateaus where, you know, you might see some weight loss because you're really focused intently on it. Then you might plateau for a while. And here's what you need to do to, you know, take it to the next level. Yeah, that's a really good point. We, we definitely see users who come in with 
many times un unrealistic goals right off the bat, and sometimes they, they can be realistic, um, but I, I, my two cents for, for something like that would be to set um, very concrete short-term goals. Um, sort of keep your eye on where what the long-term vision is. So, so if you're driving from New York to California, you know your destination is, is California, but sort of the stops along the way will, will kind of uh, dictate whether you go the, the north-south, the south, you know, the south route, um, but it's really, it's those small, small journeys in between that I think uh, make all the difference. And if you're focusing on just driving, you know, 50 miles in one day, that's doable. That's doable. You could do that. That's, you know, you could see that uh, versus getting to California in a week or in, in a day or something. Yeah. So. It can be too overwhelming to Super think about, I want to lose 50 pounds, you know, and right. you have to think about day to day. And when you don't lose 50 pounds in the first month or two, yeah. then it's like, oh, well, I, this is not going to work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about these goals for sure. a minute. Um, can a goal be something other than a number that is a readout on a scale? Absolutely. A goal, I would say, um, should be something that is other than a readout on a scale. Um, so I, I would say a good goal is something that um, helps you do the things that would lead to, um, to getting that number on the scale. So, um, for example, uh, we talked about mind, you know, being more mindful. So weighing in, um, that's, that could be just make, making sure you weigh in consistently. Uh, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, we, there's a, you know, we, we find that some of our users have scale anxiety. So just stepping on the scale is very anxiety provoking. Um, so maybe a goal for this one week is to just consistently weigh in uh, so that you're kind of able to not fear the scale as much. Um, and again, increase that mind, uh, mindfulness towards, yeah. uh, towards that. Well, uh, more about what I was getting at. So if I'm somebody that really enjoys fried foods, mm -hmm. a goal could be, well, instead of eating fried foods five days a week, I'm going to eat fried foods two days a week Absolutely. for the first 30 days. Or, you know what, I'm, I tend to have my dinner meal around the 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then I'm tired, I go right to bed, I'm not burning that off, I'm going to shift my meal time from 9.30 or 10 to 6 in the evening. I mean, th those are also kinds of things that I think, if I'm not, uh, right here, are measurable goals that we can, you know, chalk a win up in the column. Absolutely. The only, the only thing I would disagree with is the 30 days. I would actually do that over a shorter period of time so that you could see, hey, is this working? What's working? What's not working? What can we do different and yeah. kind of shorten yeah. that sprint? Yeah. Um, but yeah. absolutely, that's yeah. a great way. That's a great goal. Yep. Yeah. So a couple minutes ago, we spoke about the obesity epidemic happening sure. in the U.S. What do you think are some misconceptions around obesity and the related health conditions that could come with that? Yeah, I think um, just in my, my observation, I think certain I think people sometimes think that obesity is a character flaw. Um, and I think it's hard for some people to relate to people who cannot lose weight. Uh, losing weight is, is very difficult. And even people who have managed to lose significant amount of weight, what worked for them might not work for, for somebody else. Because obesity is such a complex issue, um, unraveling and decoupling what, it, what works for one person, because it really is a combination of, of the society that we live in and their specific circumstance um, and really just kind of unraveling that uh, specific to them. So I would say, um, you know, I would say that uh, a, a person, uh, a person's journey is very specific uh, to themselves. And I think that sometimes gets, gets lost. Yeah, and their cognitive behavioral cues for eating something versus something else could be totally different Absolutely. than the next person. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it, it triggers vary from person to person significantly. So. Um, absolutely. So I want to go back to the beginning of the conversation where we were talking about the study design. I think you had mentioned that you you did this study with a large employer. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it was a combination of uh, different uh, companies uh, in uh, in actually Korea. We have a, an office in Korea as well, um, and that's yeah, that's where it took place. And do you see large employers? Um, and I, I guess maybe more so self-insured employers looking at the, um, you know, the obesity epidemic and saying, you know what, we've got to fix this because it's adding cost into the healthcare system. People are unhealthy. Absenteeism is up. Diabetes is up. Coronary artery disease. I mean, you know, the, the, the ball just picks up momentum downhill and, um, 
So, and insurance companies, you know, our, our, I see a lot of insurance companies, you know, offering wellness programs where they say, get into the gym and we'll subsidize your gym membership. Um, how do you begin to think about all of these angles and things coming together with employers, insurance companies, um, and, and now smart technology to lose weight? Is, is it an and or an or? Yeah, that's a really that's a really good question. I think um, I think there are certain companies, um, employers, um, insurance companies that um, have already begun offering those things, and we've worked with with a number of them. I think the the challenging thing kind of brings us back to the first question uh, that we or the first concept that we spoke about here is you know all apps are not the same, right? So just having a weight loss app doesn't mean that it actually helps people lose weight. And so, um, so that's why it's important for all of these studies, um, you know, to be published to actually demonstrate what is effective and what's what's not effective. Um, I know that um, you know we've worked with employee uh, employers who have offered uh, the diabetes prevention program, which is a program that we you know that overlaps tremendous amount with what we offer right now, even with our weight loss app. Um, and if you think about behavioral weight loss, that is really is the gold standard for decreasing your chances of developing diabetes uh, later on, which, which can, be, um, can be more inexpensive uh, for, uh, for insurance companies. So I think uh, some have already started to do it. Um, and I believe that as we go on and on, uh, more will jump on the bandwagon as well. Yeah. Well, we, we sure need to you know, shine the spotlight on this. Um, weight loss and technology and the utilization of technology and healthcare is really picking up steam. Um, tell us, Doctor, once again, where we can find your app. Sure, um, if you go to uh, noom.com, uh, that's uh, N-O-O-M, like moon backwards, uh, noom.com, um, should be really easy to download it from, from there. Uh, it'll link you to uh, either uh, app store that you're in. Okay, well, very good. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. And uh, look forward to having you again in the future. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you.